uh, Indian markets opening in uh, just seconds here, looking at a down arrow story along with the region given futures and also pre-market. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what really has been driving these uh, stocks down in this part of the world, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is warning that the rate of interest rate hikes may need to re-accelerate. High interest rates negatively affect the U.S. India currency trade due to the shrinking interest uh, rate differential. Let's get now some perspective with Amisha Vora, chairperson and MD at Rahulas Liladha Lil a Group. It's an Indian financial services company. I hope I didn't murder it. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you for, for, for joining us. Let's just get a sense of what you made of Powell's statement and uh, the read through for, for you uh, as, uh, and for Indian investors. So I think uh, we continue to maintain, and now it's been more uh, emphasized that this rate cycle, the rate regime, is here to stay longer than shorter, and it will def definitely have its telling impact. Uh, I think both the flux of money that we infused in the markets during COVID, but beyond that, as it was immediately followed by the Ukraine-Russia war and the commodity crisis and cost pressures, both combined have led to a very, uh, you know, vicious circle as far as the inflation and cost push is concerned. So this rate regime uh, yesterday has been re-emphasized that it's likely to be here for a while. And I don't think that India will be completely uh, saved out of that, as whenever the export markets are weak, we also feel the pain. But our economic macros are much, much better. When you compare the real interest rate compared to inflation, India is almost at par, while the difference to catch up for the developed economies is almost 300 to 400 basis points, particularly in Europe and, of course, in U.S. also. So emerging markets will have this year in their favor, and within that, India too, is what we believe. Uh, so naturally, if you are looking at this space, you're going to be looking at uh, a portfolio, and, I, and I'm assuming you'd have a balanced portfolio here as well. So what are you looking at for sustainable wealth creation, or is it wealth preservation you're looking at now more than anything else? So this year to our investors, particularly, we've been telling that a more asset allocation portfolio will help wherein you invest also on the bond side particularly we are equity house most of the pmss offerings in wealth creations are generally around equities but we say that this year it will help better to allocate amongst different asset classes and also a good portion to uh, fixed income and within that also to short duration to start with, and as we move ahead in the year, we'll gradually go into long duration. But if we talk about equities, some of the sectors that we prefer uh, starts with sectors where we see that the growth itself is very defensive and the visibility is good. Defense being one amongst that within the pile of manufacturing, which is doing very well, as defense policy in India is totally changed favoring the domestic manufacturers as also creating the base and a huge defense program has been lined up. So most of the listed domestic public sector owned defense companies and a few private owned defense companies will do very well, right. both in terms of their order booking. Uh, and second sector, we Amisha. prefer, yeah. Uh, you talked about fixed income. Fixed income products are giving about 8% returns. Do you see investors moving to some of these products? Yeah, we've been seeing that because not only fixed income products, but fixed deposits by banks, which is the most safest, uh, you know, with large banks, they've also been started offering a good rate. And so we feel that fixed in income movement has definitely been happening in India also. How are you assessing the valuations of uh, Indian stocks right now, given the recent uh, uh, downside which we saw? So when you compare with India's historic uh, valuations over, say, last 10 years, we have come almost at par, and we are at just about 100 bips premium to 10-year averages. 
But when you see across the region, I think we are at a super premium, and that's how the Indian markets are consolidating for a while, uh, given the fact that we were the best performing markets last year, and due to the global turmoil, the FI flows are still not positive in India. Uh, given, Amisha, that you have uh, branches all over the country, how are you seeing the mood amongst the retail investor, which has been so dominant, or should I say so influential in uh, these uh, equity markets in particular, in, in the last couple of years? So I think, uh, you know, the number of uh, net active NSC investors after tripling during the COVID period has been sobering down. They've been going down month over month for last almost six months. We've been also seeing that uh, their participation has been reducing, but the silver lining is that these SIP, mutual fund SIP numbers are continuing to hold very well. It's almost one and a half billion a month. And that's what is really sustaining markets. But the retail investors are finding it difficult to navigate a very choppy and range-bound market. Mm, given expectations of higher rates, can, I guess, dramatic flows be sustained, you think? The mutual fund flows, uh, the SIP-based flows, uh, I think will sustain because uh, last year also the Overall business opened up, so the need for money to move back to working capital or within the businesses, whether it is small businesses, mom and pop shop, MSMEs, all that money has been going back, but these mutual fund flows uh, are very steady. So that I continue to uh, believe that will continue to be very stable. But one more statistic that NSE cash market volumes have fallen almost 40%. Uh, from the peak. And that's also shows us that, you know, the huge euphoria of euphoria within the retail to participate in equity has been sobering down as the newcomers are learning uh, how to navigate markets which are typically so volatile. Amisha, thank you so much for joining us. Amisha Vora there from Prabhudas uh, Lil Adha group there joining us from India. Okay, let's just quickly check on the, the market opening in Mumbai, having a look at uh, what's uh, going on with the major benchmarks there.